So this morning, I stumbled upon a cryptocurrency called NEO. We had a discussion within the premium membership and one person was asking, what should I currently do with my bag of different altcoins? Because they have come down quite a bit, right? Bitcoin went down roughly 50% from its all-time high. So a lot of the altcoins, they went down more than that. They went down 60, 70, 80%. And in that context, I was looking at the crypto ranking a few years ago. So this is cryptocurrency market cap, crypto market cap in March of 2018. 18. And so I was scrolling through this kind of like getting the message across that the top cryptocurrencies, they change quite a lot over time. So what's now in the top 10 is very likely not going to be in the top 10, say three or four years from now. So when we look at this ranking here, what we see is NEO is at place number six. Now, where is it today? Today, we have to scroll down quite a bit, right? We keep scrolling, we keep scrolling. And there we are at place number 61 is NEO. What happened to the market cap? The market cap is currently 862 million. It used to be at 8.3 billion. And so this is what happened to the NEO price, right? This was March of 2018. Since then, NEO went down quite a lot versus Bitcoin, a 97% underperformance. The US dollar chart doesn't look that bad, right? The US dollar chart still doesn't look great. But once we look at this in relative valuation, right? Relative to Bitcoin, relative to Ethereum, it's a bit more problematic to say the least. What we can also do is we can look at NEO in the relative valuation versus the other altcoins. So there's a measure for the altcoin cryptocurrency market cap. It's called total three. So it looks at cryptocurrencies market cap minus Bitcoin's market cap and minus Ethereum's market cap. So it's a market cap of all the altcoins except Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's total three. And what we can then do is we can divide the NEO price by total three. So let's look at this maybe in the one week tickers. Initially, we had, of course, our boom. But since then, since August of 2017, NEO underperformed very, very heavily in the grand scheme of altcoins. And so that's my general general stance on a lot of altcoins. We see the similar simulation, a similar kind of situation happening in stocks as we do in cryptocurrency. Most assets, they do not outperform the large safe bets. So what you can do is you can, for example, buy the Nasdaq ETF and then you can track different stocks, different technology stocks relative to the Nasdaq. And you will see a lot of stocks that actually do not outperform the general market. Most stocks don't. And the same is true for cryptocurrencies. When we measure a cryptocurrency relative to the safe bet to Bitcoin, most cryptocurrencies underperform. Now, how is that possible? It's because the few that do outperform, they outperform massively, meaning say 80% of the gains is concentrated in 20% of the players, or maybe it's even 90 to 10. We don't know the exact ratio. I haven't calculated this, but it's pretty safe to say that the winnings, they are not equally distributed. It's very often that there's only a few winners and a lot of losers. And so when we look at something like NEO, right? When we look at something that underperformed for such a long period of time, does it really make sense to bet on these waves? Does it really make sense to try to time these rallies, right? They are still 75% or so every now and then, right? Another one over here in December of 2019. We even saw temporarily a rally of 270%. But still, in the grand scheme of things, it's very hard to compete with Bitcoin. You really need to have a very, very attractive value proposition. You need to see a lot of adoption. You need to see sound tokenomics, right? So even if you've got a lot of adoption, if your token is inflating too much, you're not really profiting from this as an investor in the base layer token. So what I always think is it probably makes sense to be very, very picky with your investments, to not just spray and pray, so to speak, because the general altcoin market, it underperforms. And that means on the other hand, that it's also a pretty tough task, right? If only say 20% of the altcoins really outperform, they outperform 
massively, then you have to say no all the time, just the smallest of the doubts is another no. And you have to really dig very deep into the fundamentals to find out the thing that could potentially outperform. And that's quite a risky game, right? And because it is risky, when we look at an overall portfolio, say we just look now at the crypto portfolio, we should, because we've got more risk in finding the winner, allocate less capital to that bet. So we should have most capital in Bitcoin, in my opinion, even though it's not very exciting, even though it's probably not going to 10x tomorrow. It's still a matter of risk versus reward. And risk versus reward for Bitcoin is great, right? It's going up around 70% per annum if you look at the logarithmic regression. So the risk versus reward for Bitcoin is good. The risk versus reward for altcoins is questionable. It's really dependent on how well you can pick something. And if I had to pick something, would I really, when I put that much of a threshold to my investments, would I really go with NEO that's underperforming that much, that already had its very nice times, that now doesn't generate as much excitement? Would I go with NEO? Probably not. It does make sense to be cautious. It does make sense to rather bet on the underdog than to bet on something that could simply be described as a falling star, right? There once were a lot of eyes on the token, on the asset. A lot of people have been left out. They are now disappointed. So all those burnt investors, they are unlikely going to get in. And it's also unlikely that NEO is going to be rising like the phoenix out of the ashes. I think it's more likely that the new kit will come around new kid on the block will tell a new interesting story and that's then where all the risk capital will flow into. That's simply just also in the overall market right now, right? We are now currently trending in Bitcoin at around 30k. We're not going much above, not much below. There's not a lot of attention on crypto. If you look at social metrics, are people really looking at crypto? It's not the case. So why seek out risk right now when there's not a lot of people that are looking to get exposure to risk. And obviously, NEO is risky. If we just look at this in terms of market dominance, right? How much of all of crypto is in NEO? It's 0.07%. Bitcoin has around 40%. Ethereum has around 20%. Here we're looking at 0.07%. Way, way more risk. A pretty abysmal performance over the long term. So getting into NEO, in my opinion, is simply now just basically gambling. It's like buying a lottery ticket and hoping for this short-term rally. It can happen, but so can a win in the lottery. Who knows? On this channel, I don't just try to shill any kind of random crypto project that you might see on YouTube from other channels. Here, I simply try to keep it real. So if you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe, of course, because I do publish videos regularly. There's also a public Telegram group. We are more than 2,000 people over there. Simply search for Bitcoin Strategy Channel within the Telegram app. And of course, we've got a premium membership to be found at the bitcoinstrategy.com. You can ask me any questions there directly. I can analyze your portfolio if you're interested in that. There's also more information around this in this video over here. So hope to see you in that video and thanks for watching this one. Bye-bye.